Welcome back, folks, to Scripting for Linguists. In this episode, I have this question for us. When solving a word search, which is fastest? Python, Julia, or Mojo, the new kid on the block? The reason I ask this question now is because this month, December of 2024, I have been doing the Advent of Code challenges. The Advent of Code is a website, very transparently named, I might add, at adventofcode.com, where uh, the person who creates this website gives challenges, uh, coding challenges each day. And there are two parts to each challenge each day. And day four had one that's kind of linguistically oriented. So I had a question about which one of, the, which of those three languages is fastest to solve this particular coding challenge. Now, um, there's like a little story here, kind of like a Christmas oriented or holiday oriented or winter oriented type story thing. We won't jump into that, but the, the point of this challenge is, I'll show, I'll zoom in on their toy example to explain it. Here is their toy grid. And it has, I think it's a 10 by 10 grid, 10 lines, 10 columns, or 10 characters in each line. And what we have is you're trying to find all occurrences of Xmas, X-M-A-S, right? Shortened version of Christmas. There's X, there's M, there's A, and there's S. So there's one occurrence of Xmas right there going down right. Um, there's some others in here, right? If we go, there's X, M, A, S. So that's going down left to find another occurrence of Xmas. So you can go in any eight directions, any of the eight directions that you can do in a word search, right? You can go right, left, up, down, down right, up right, up left, left down, etc. All eight of those directions, but you can't go across from one border of the grid to the other. So for example, right here in the bottom left of my screen, X, M, A, S, you can't do that. You can't go, you can't jump across the board like that. But so that's, that was the challenge. That's part one of the challenge. And so in this little uh, toy example, there are 18 occurrences of Xmas in that little grid. So that's part one. Let me show you my full um, data. Each person gets their own kind of unique data. So I have this one here. This is my grid. I can't zoom in enough to, without it kind of splitting, doing a word wrap thing. So I don't know if you can tell, but this, it's all these letters are X, M, A, S, but jumbled up. And so my script is supposed to find all of the X misses in whatever direction it's going in this um, grid. I think it's 150 or 140 characters in each line by 140, 150 lines in my input file. So yeah, that's what I had to do. And let me show you what I did, what I've done. So the first thing I did was write it in Julia. I am trying to get more and more comfortable writing Julia code. And so on day one of the challenge this month, I actually used Python and, and did it pretty quickly. And I thought, you know, I want to get more and more comfortable writing Julia code. So I decided to, to jump to Julia. And I've been using Julia since. But um, so yeah, so the first thing I did here with day four was write it in Julia. And here it is. Let's zoom in a bit on my code. Um, so yeah, I read in the lines there. And then um, here is a helper function that creates the four character strings in all eight directions that you can go right, left, down, up, left, up, left, down, right, up, right, down, etc. Simply creating those strings. You try to do that, but if you hit a, a border of that grid, you get a, what's called a bounds error in Julia, which is like an index error in Python. And you return nothing out of this helper function. Otherwise, you return the actual out string. Um, so that's that little helper function. And then here's part one where I'm looping over the lines first. I'm calling it Y. So I'm using Y as my iterator, my, my variable in my fourth uh, loop for the vertical axis. And then X for the horizontal across the characters in a given line. And then I just simply say, hey, if the current character is X, then we're going to loop over those eight directions like that. You call the helper function, pass it in the direction right there. And if that equals Xmas, then just add one to our counter our overall counter of how many Xmases we find in my grid. And then you just print it out. So again, just to jump back over the website, this is my, my input file. It's a big, massive, like 150 line by 150 um, characters with just a jumbled up mess of X, M, A, S, 
jumbled up, and so I have to find all the correct occurrences uh, or all the actual occurrences of Xmas in here. I don't know if I can find one super quickly right now. Just looking at it, no. There's one right there. Going right. Here's another one going right, right there. Anyway, so that is what it does. And so I did that in Julia. We'll look at part two in a second. And then I translated that into Python, just basically a straight translation of my code in Julia into Python. Same idea there, nothing uh, really to stop and look at. Just basically it's a translation into Python. Good. Oh, I will point out that you have to deal with the fact that in Python, you can do a negative index on a string and it'll give you the last character. Like if I do negative one on a string, an index of negative one, it'll give me the last character on the far right of the string. In Julia, it doesn't. It actually just gives you a, what's called a bounds error, like an index error in Python. So I had to deal with that a little bit differently here in um, Python. I had to just like check to make sure it didn't go below zero or it, um, if it did, I would just return none. So a little bit more work there in uh, Python to deal with that. But yeah, the same basic idea. And then in Mojo, this is where I had to take a lot of time to like Google all sorts of stuff and pull up the docs and uh, use the docs quite a bit, Docs, uh, the API docs. But the same idea, same basic idea here in Mojo, uh, just translated into, uh, that's still part two, let's go back up here. Here's, here is basically the same idea that we have um, and the other two languages. Here's my little list of strings, the, the eight directions that you can go in a word search, right? Looping over the Y, looping over the X. If it's current characters X, then loop over the directions and call that helper function that I defined uh, in Mojo above. Anyway, same basic idea. There's my helper function right in here. Oh yeah, Mojo, I, if I'm wrong, please correct me, viewer, in the comments, but it doesn't look like they have a, like a a try uh, accept, at least not with an um, assert error. So I had to like, again, manually check to make sure that X never went below uh, zero, like never went out of the grid boundaries. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments, but I, I, I'm not sure if I was missing something, but I tried to use a try. Um, it just didn't seem one, it didn't seem to work. So I just, just uh, did this approach. Okay, good, so that's Mojo, that's part one. And before I show you the results, let me just explain part two. We'll look at both part one and part two results in a second. So that's part one of the challenge for day four. Part two, like once you solve part one, it'll display part two of the challenge for that day. And what part two was is down here. Let me zoom in a bit for us. Here's part two of that same challenge from day four. It wanted you to find M A X being crossed like an X with another M A X. Again, in either direction, it could be from top left to bottom right, or from bottom right to top left, or, you know, like a backslash or forward slash. You know, you had to find an A that was being shared by an M and an S in an X format. Let me just zoom way in here. See that, it's creating the, the, the moss right there, and the two mosses are creating an X. That's the idea. It wanted you to find those. And, um, and it could, they could be shared. So let me just zoom in on their toy example again. Uh, so here we have Moss right here, M-A-S. Let me just get Google out of the way. I don't want to translate. That's cool, and I'm, I'm fine. Um, there's M-A-S, which is being shared with M-A-S right there. Okay, so that's what's, what it's doing there. There's an M-A-S, and that A right there is being shared with this M-A-S. S. So, yeah, trying to find Xmas, but the two words must in an X form, and you know, physically in an X form. And there are eight occurrences of that in this little toy grid. But again, it's the same input. It's my same input of this massive grid, this 150 by 150 grid, trying to find all the Xmases that were the two masses that occur in an X form. So let's take a look at that. If we jump back over to Julia, I implemented it first in Julia. So here's get cross strings. And what this is, it's a helper function that takes in the lines and the X and the, the Y coordinate of the, an A. When you find an A in there, pass it into this function and um, create first the, what I call the forward slash, then the second, create the backslash, 
just using um, you know plus one or minus one on the X and the Y to create the forward slash and the backslash centered on A. Return that as a little uh, vector in Julia. If it goes outside the bounds, if it hits one of the borders, then you know return nothing. And again, kind of the same idea as before. We're going to loop over the Y and the X. If the current character is A, then throw it at that helper function. And then what I do, I mean, I didn't show it, but right here, I create two vectors and I combine them or extend them to use Python terminology. I extend the two vectors, which are like lists in Python, excuse me, into one. And I say, if after you sort that, actually sort right there, sort, sort. After you sort them and combine them, you should end up with AMS and AMS. If that's the case, if that's what you see, then you know you have an X mass, X mass. Add one to our counter there and return that out. So that's what I did. Um, I'm using Julia version 111.2. And so I translated that again um, into Python. Here is my part two right here, same exact idea, same logic, just using Python stuff, you know, range and len and um, using lists in the helper function up here, using extend, using sorted, just a translation into Python there, but same exact idea. And then over in Mojo, same idea, just a translation, but again, it took a little bit longer. I had to do quite a bit of Googling. Actually, Googling is not, there's not a whole lot of stuff on Mojo yet online. So I was mostly trying to understand the API docs. Uh, but yeah, same basic idea, it's right in here. Um, don't need to get too in the weeds here, but yeah, there's my backslash, forward slash, et cetera. Sort them up, extend it, put them into one, see if that is identical to what um, they would be if they're sorted up. So, okay, so I just am pointing out that I uh, am having fun with this challenge and having fun figuring how to do it in Julia and uh, Python and, and Mojo here. So I ran them both. And I made sure I got the same results. I got the same results uh, from when I got the correct. You, when you put in a result, you, it tells you whether or not you're correct. And so I got the same results there for my grid. Part one was this result of 2,567. And part two had a result of 2,029. So I got that with all three languages. So that's cool. Again, using my input grid, which is this big, massive grid of a lot of letters, not only four letters, M, A, S, and X. Okay, so I timed them. I did 10 trials. I didn't show that. Let me show that real quick. I did 10 trials right down in here. And in Julia, I used the elapsed macro to time how long it took to do part one and how to do how long it took to do part two. I wrote that out to a CSV file that I could then put into R. Same idea in Python, 10 trials using the range, using the performance counter uh, function in Python there for both part one and part two. Cool. And with Mojo, I used, what I used? Yeah, the performance counter nanosecond uh, in Mojo there for each of those two parts. Oh yeah, I'm using, um, I'm using Mojo, oh, I didn't explain, let me, so yeah, I'm using Julia version one, 111.2, I'm using Python version uh, 3.13.1, which is the current release at time of recording this video. It's both for Julia and for Python. With Mojo, um, I'm using a nightly build. I'm using version 25.1.0. It's 25.1.0 dot 2024 12 It was the nightly build I used uh, for Mojo. Okay. Let's go take a look at our results over in R. Here we go. There they are. So in purple, we have Julia on the left-hand side of each of these two plots. Purple is Julia. Orange right here in the middle is Mojo. And this uh, kind of yellow on the bottom right of each plot is Python. So first take-home message is Python is fastest, fastest with both parts one and part two of day four of the advent of code for this year, 2024. So let's look at part one on the left-hand side first. Julia is slowest, then Mojo, then Python. Awesome. Finally, Mojo wins a competition here handedly against Julia. 
I've tried Mojo a couple times, different times, right, with this uh, on this playlist, and uh, it's usually been slower with text processing type stuff. I need to try it on matrix multiplication. That's where it really shines, I believe. I need to try it there. But with corpus linguistic stuff, this not, is not exactly corpus linguistics, but it's uh, kind of a linguistic thing of a word search. Mojo is actually quicker than Julia, but not as quick as Python. They're all pretty darn quick. I mean, look, look on the Y axis here. These are in seconds. So that's, for example, right here, this tick mark is 0.1 seconds or 100 milliseconds. Right, it's taking Julia just over 100 milliseconds to do that. It's taking Mojo about 60 or 70 milliseconds to do the task. And it's taking Python, what is that, about 20 milliseconds, give or take, for part one. On the right-hand side of this plot, we have part two, right, which was the Xmas in a cross-type um, structure. Julia actually is quicker. There's this one outlier up here. These two outliers at the very top of Julia are when it's compiled. The first time you run a Julia script, it compiles and it takes longer, and then the rest are quicker. So yeah, Julia's quicker down here, it's below Mojo, but they're not too far apart. But yeah, Julia's a little bit quicker with part two than, Mo than Mojo is with part two. But again, Python is quicker than both. And um, they're all pretty darn quick though. This tick mark right here is 0 0.01 seconds or 10 milliseconds. And so what is this, Python's down at like, four milliseconds and Mojo's up at like, I don't know, 16 milliseconds or so. So if you're doing it once, obviously any of these would be fine, but I was just curious to know what would happen there. So we have a clear winner. Python is a clear winner here. And then we have, um, then we have Mojo in part one quicker than Julia, but in part two it's the vice versa. Julia's quicker than Mojo over in, um, Part two, part one, did I say that kind of correctly? Part one, Julia slower. Part two, Mojo slower. Okay, let's go back to our question. When solving a word search, which is fastest? Python, Julia, or Mojo? Python is quicker uh, in this word search, in both of those word searches, part one and part two. So there you go. I was happy to see Mojo was quicker than Julia in part two, like we just saw a second ago. And Julia was quicker, no, excuse me, Mojo was quicker in part one, and then Julia was quicker in part two. So anyway, I'm having a lot of fun doing the advent of code. I'll leave a link to the advent of code in um, the description of this video. And uh, if you want to try it, go for it. It's kind of fun. There's um, the one from the day 13 required some matrix multiplication. Um, so that was fun as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment, I'd appreciate any feedback. I'm This is like an educational channel, right? I want feedback. I love to learn from you guys, people who put comments in the, in the, um, on the video. And don't forget to subscribe if you like to as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time.